So today we are talking about polar coordinates and graphing these things. We are going to get ordered pairs today. The ordered pairs today are going to be r and theta. r represent, representing the radius and theta representing the angle. So if we wanted to graph like we did earlier, 2 comma pi over 3, you go to the second radius, so the second ring, pi over 3, right there, there's my graph. That one's pretty easy to graph. Let's say there's some different things we can do with them, and some of them you're already pretty familiar with. Let's say we wanted to graph that same thing, but with my r being negative. So instead of 2 pi over 3, I'm graphing two, negative 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 would take me to that same spot on the circle. Thoughts, what do you think a negative radius is going to do to this dot if we would have normally started here? Show me with your fingers which quadrant do you think you would end up in if you have negative 2 and pi over 3. All right, no one showing me anything. It's good to know. The correct answer is 3. Grant, why do you think it's going to be in the third quadrant? Okay. Yep. We're, we're going this direction. Here's what I always think about. If I'm writing that one that way, it tells me to go from the center at that angle. It's telling me to walk that way too. Okay, walk to the second radius. So if it tells me negative 2, you're doing the exact opposite. You're still on the same angle track. Okay, I'm still on that track of going to pi over 3. But instead of going that way, I'm just walking backwards. So if you have a r value that's negative, you can say this in different ways. I'm going to say... Uh, you can go diagonal, but the phrase I'm always going to use is you ride the line. You're going to ride the line in the opposite direction. Instead of going forward to, we're going to go backwards to. And so we're going to stay on that same line that we began and just ride it the other direction. Let's say our angle was negative. So again, we're starting at that same point right there, but this time it's 2, negative pi over 3. What do we do differently if I had a negative radius with that dot, or I'm sorry, a negative angle with that dot? You know that already. Here's pi over 3. I go whoop this way to pi over 3. What am I going to do to get to negative pi over 3? Go down. You would subtract pi over 3. Okay? Or in other words, it takes that point and flips it directly over the x-axis. We're going to flip over the x-axis. That's what happens when we have a negative angle. Let's say both are negative. Let's say I wanted to graph negative 2, negative pi over 3. That's positive 2 pi over 3. Talk with your neighbor. Discuss where do you think negative 2, negative pi over 3 is going to fall. Show me with your fingers. Which quadrant do you think we're ending up in? We are ending up in the second quadrant because we are doing both of those things. So you can, it doesn't matter which order you do them in. You can ride the line first and go across to here and then do a negative angle. So a negative angle would then flip me up to get me there. Or you could have flipped first and then rode the angle. Either way, it's going to get you to the same spot. Okay, so we're going to do both. Or in other words, it's kind of like reflecting over the, or over the y axis. It's kind of just flipping over the y axis. Flip over y-axis, or in other words, do both. Flip over the x and ride the line. Just think it through. You shouldn't be too bad. So what we're doing on this next part here is we're going to graph these different things. So if you wrote all over your circle, sorry, I was just using it for demonstration purposes. Um, but now we're going to graph these things. So letter A says 1 pi. You're trying to graph A, B, and C. Take a second with your neighbor and try to graph A, B, and C without me, on your graph, and label them A, B, and C. Here we go. Point, where's 1 pi going to be located? Everybody, point for me, where's 1 pi located? <laughs> Don't just point at the screen, <laughs> you bums, all of you. 1 pi. I was looking more of a directional point. That's letter A. <laughs> letter B, point directionally. Which way is letter B going to end up? It's at the top, because 3 pi over 2 would be at the bottom but you have a negative radius, and so it's going to shoot you across to the other side. You're going to uh, just flip over the x-axis. 
uh, in that case. Letter C, it's 2 and 7 pi over 3. We don't like 7 pi over 3. It's too big for us, so what can we do to make it fit on my circle? Subtract 2 pi, which is like subtracting 6 pi over 3. So it's the same ordered pair as 2 pi over 3. I can graph that pretty easily, 2 and pi over 3. Hey, cool, I already got that dot there. Everybody kind of clear on the first three? Do the next three if you haven't yet. All right. Show me fingers, negative 3 and 2 pi over 3. Which quadrant are you in? Negative 3 and 2 pi over 3. Show me fingers for quadrants. Alyssa, how'd you graph that one? So we're start. hang on, let me start off here. Here's 3, 2 pi over 3. This is where you started, but it's not going there because of the negative radius. What did that negative radius make you do? Yep. Yep, rode the line across. Now she's down here in the fourth quadrant. Good. There's that one. Show me with your fingers which quadrant. That was D. Show me with your fingers which quadrant is letter E in. Letter E. Zach, how'd you get to there? So the original spot was right here. The negative radius is taking you the opposite way, so he reflected over the x-axis. Boom, right there. That's E. Good. Letter F. Show me with your fingers. Which quadrant is letter F in? Good. We started at 2 and pi over 4. So this is the original spot, but that's not what we're doing with that. Audrey, what would you do after that original spot? Over the y-axis. She could have done both. If she would have done both, she would have gone across and then gone up, or she could have just flipped over the y-axis and got her to that point right there, which is letter F. Good. Questions with any of those? <coughs> this next part is one of my favorite things that we do with these because it's just a little bit of a puzzle. Which of these is not the same? So three out of these four points are talking about the exact same point. One of them is describing a different point. It is your job to graph all four and figure out which one is different. So take a second with your neighbor, try to graph all four, and you're trying to figure out which one is different. Try to do number one and two here and see which one you can get. Number one, negative four, 225. We went to 225 and wrote across for A. For B, it was 405, so I could subtract 360, so it's the same as 445. Cool, it's the same point. So since A and B were the same, I knew the answer was either C or D. Negative 445, oh, that started here, but the negative radius rode me across to this side. So that's where C is located, and D would have started here, rode across, and flipped up. That's where D would have ended up. So C was the one that was not like the other. Again, you're trying the same thing with number two and figuring out what's happening there. Two, we're getting a lot of Ds. See if we agree. Two, negative 30. We'll just do this quickly. Two, negative 30 would be boop. Negative 30 takes me down. There's A, B, it rides me across, 510's too big, so I subtract 360, I started out at 150, and it was a negative radius, so I wrote across, so A and B are the same, negative 2, 150, yeah, that's the same there as well, D is 480, that's too big, I subtract 360, that ends me up here, okay, so D is up there, so that one, D was the incorrect one, everybody clear with that? I like this problem because we just described the exact same points on these, for both of them, three different ways to describe the same point. There are infinitely amount of w different ways of describing that same point. It just could be said in different ways. And so down below, we're going to practice doing this in different ways. And so we are graphing the ordered pair 5, 2 pi over 3. All right, if you need a visual, maybe go back to that original graph here. And let's graph 5, 2 pi over 3. So that is this dot right there. That's my original dot, 5, 2 pi over 3. I am then going to rewrite this ordered pair three different ways. The first way it describes is this. They want us to graph it with a radius that is positive. So the radius isn't going to change. It's going to stay the number five. But it tells me it wants me to graph it with an angle that's between negative two pi and zero. Or in other words, what's got to be true about my angle? It needs to be a negative angle. So which angle what I want to use that is going to match up with me here with that 2 pi over 3 value. The one on the opposite half of the x-axis, which would be 4 pi over 3. So 5 and negative 4 pi over 3 
are describing the same thing because that negative radius. Basically, when you take 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3, it gets you 2 pi. Same thing on part B here. Part B says, this time we're graphing it with a radius that's less than 0. So obviously, the radius we want to use is negative 5. But it wants my angle to be between 0 and 2 pi. So if I want to end up at this point, but I want a negative radius, which angle am I going to use to match up with it? The one directly across from it, which is 5 pi over 3. If you rode that line all across, it would be 5 pi over 3. Last one, same thing. My radius, okay, this time my radius needs to be positive, so it's 5 again. But this time my angle needs to be between 2 pi and 4 pi. Or in other words, I need to take this original point and add 2 pi to it because it needs to be bigger than 2 pi. So if I took 2 pi plus 2 pi over 3, that would get me 8 pi over 3 when you get common denominators and add it. Questions with how we wrote different points? You are doing the same thing. You're starting off with negative 3 and negative pi over 4. Start off with that and figure out what you get. We are trying to get points to match up with the ordered pair 3 and 3 pi over 4 because that's the same as that one. And so we're trying to get stuff to match up with this guy right here. So, Carrington, what would you write on the first one? I need a positive radius, so obviously it's going to be a 3. What would you do for a negative angle to match up with that guy right there? The angle right across from it, so negative 5 pi over 4. Good. Negative 5 pi over 4. Uh, letter B, Ashley, now I'm writing it with a negative radius, so it's going to be negative 3. What's the uh, angle need to be to match up with that negative radius? So if I were right here to start, what's a negative radius due to my graph? Negative radius, I'm going to ride straight across the other side. Mm -hmm. So which one is going to line up with it across the front? Yep. So it is negative 3 and 7 pi over 4. And then the last one, we are just adding 2 pi to it because we're trying to fall into between there. So I'm taking 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. If I added 2 pi to that, Campbell, what am I going to end up at? 11 pi over 4. Good. Questions on the front side? Show me with fingers, zero, awful, five, great. Where are you right now with graphing those things? And you'll get better. If you're at a four right now, it's not as bad as it seems. We'll keep going. Flip it over to the backside. Backside, we can go through the first part pretty quickly. So right now, we just started talking about polar graphs, which is great. Okay, Polar graphs are very helpful. They help us do a lot of things. But the problem is they don't give us polar graphs very often. They often give, us to that, give them to us as... Um, they give them to us as rectangular graphs. And so what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to convert back and forth between rectangular and polar. All right, so we need to be able to take this graph that right now looks rectangular, and we need to decide what would that, whoa, what would this graph look like if it were a grid? And so we're going to go back and forth between those two. If you want to use this uh, screen that I'm using right now, the website is www dot tinyurl.com slash polar convert. There's nothing fancy about it. I just made it last night, but I made it a link if you want to look at it and play with it on your phone at the same time. You can't. I made the Desmos graph that we're using. So yes, I'm a web developer basically now. Now, polar convert. It can go back and forth. So as you're trying these later and you want to check, did I do the right answer? You can use this graph to kind of flip back and forth. All right, here's the main idea. They gave us a point. Convert each polar point to rectangular. So right now, this is in polar form. That means this is R and that's theta. R and theta. That's important to understand. The most important thing to do with these things is identify what you got. I've got R and theta. I want to go to rectangular. So what am I trying to get if I'm going rectangular? X and Y. So in the end, I need to get an answer that's in form of X and Y. 
I need to take my knowledge of r and theta and convert it to x and y. And to do this, we're using formulas we already know. What's a formula that we know that utilizes r and theta and gives me x? That is cosine. Think about this formula right here. Cosine of theta equals, what does cosine mean? Cosine means x over r. That's what cosine means to us. Cosine is x over r. Cool, we're going to use that formula to solve for x. So if I want to solve for x, I'm going to multiply both sides. I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. r cosine theta. I just took both sides and multiplied it by r. Cool. Now I know exactly what x is. x is equal to r cosine theta. Or in other words, I'm going to plug in x is equal to r, which is 6, times cosine of theta, which is cosine of pi over 6. So I'm thinking unit circle. Pi over 6. I'm doing my x value. So my x value is going to be square root of 3 over 2. 6 times square root of 3 over 2. I can reduce that 6 and that 2. My x is going to be 3 radical 3. That's my x value. We can do the same thing with sine. Sine means... Sine of theta is y over r. So if I want to just solve for y, y is equal to r sine theta. And so y is going to be equal to 6 times sine of pi over 6. So I'm thinking unit circle again, pi over 6. I'm doing sine. What's sine at pi over 6 going to get me? A half. 6 times a half, my y value is 3. So if you were to go to a graph and graph the ordered pair 6 pi over 6, that is the same thing as graphing the xy coordinates of 3 radical 3 comma 3. Those two things are the same. Which quadrant would 3 radical 3 comma 3 fall into? The first one, right? They're both positive. x and y are positive. Cool. So is pi over 6. Pi over 6 is in the first quadrant. If we go back to this graph, you can see this. All right? I graphed. Let's go to this one. I graphed 6 radical 6. 6 and pi over 6, that's what I started with, sorry. 6 pi over 6, and it gave me these ordered pairs, which, guess what, are the same as 3 radical 3 and 3. Both points ended up being on the same spot. They are the same thing. All we had to do is use that conversion of x equals r cosine theta. Try the same thing on example 2. Here we go. So we're plugging these in. Show me with your fingers which quadrant is this guy end up in. Show me with your fingers which quadrant does this guy end up in. Drew, how can you tell it's going to end up in the fourth quadrant? Positive x value. It's negative 2 times negative 2 radical 2. The negatives cancel. The 2's cancel. It gets him just radical 2 for his x. And when he does it with the y's, the 2's cancel, but it's going to be negative radical 2. A positive x, a negative y, it's in the fourth quadrant. If you were to graph 3 pi over 4 with a negative 2 radius, it would be in the fourth quadrant. It's just double-checking exactly what we know. Everybody go with that? If that's good and converting from x and y and r to theta, we got to go the other way. So now we're going from rectangular to polar. So they gave us x and y, and our job is to convert this to r and theta. So we're doing the exact same thing. This time, the sine and cosine formulas don't help us because the sine formula uses r, y, and you have r and theta in them. They have two variables. I don't know what my r and theta are, so I can't use that. What's a formula that uses x and y and tells us r? Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Pythagorean theorem will tell me exactly what I want here. And so if I plug in, it's going to be 2 squared plus negative 2 squared equals r squared. One of the big mistakes we made on our quiz, what do you get when you take negative 2 and you square it? Positive 4. Don't do weird stuff. 4 plus 4, it's 8 is r squared. And so my r is going to be 2 square root of 2. You do have to simplify radicals. We can square root 8. You can get 2 radical 2. Cool, I've got my radius. I need my theta. What formulas do we know that uses x and y and can tell us an angle? 
tangent would be the other missing formula we have here. Tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So if I plugged into that, tangent of theta is equal to negative 2 over 2. Or in other words, tangent of theta is negative 1. Think in unit circle. Where on my unit circle is theta equal to negative 1? 3 pi over 4. In the third quadrant, I'm sorry, in the second quadrant, tangent is negative 1 at 3 pi over 4. Or 7 pi over 4. In the fourth quadrant, it's negative 1 as well. Which of those two numbers do I want? Do I want 3 pi over 4 or do I want 7 pi over 4? Audrey, why do you think 7 pi over 4 here? It'll put you in the what? The fourth quadrant. How do you know you need to be in the fourth quadrant? My x value is positive. My y value is negative. That's in the fourth quadrant. So I want the angle that goes with it. 2 square root of 2 and 7 pi over 4. Those two points describe the same thing. If I were to go to my graph here, and for my x value, if I wanted to type in negative, I'm sorry, positive 2, and a y value of negative 2, guess where it puts you? It's right on that place that we want. Oh, I just moved it. Oh, whatever, I just moved it. It's on the right spot. Questions on something we did with that? Try the other one. Show me with your fingers what your radius is going to be for this guy. Radius should be 2. We plug in negative 1 squared is 1. Negative radical 3 squared is 3. 1 plus 3, I square root it, I get 2. And then I'm doing the same thing with tangent. Tangent of theta equals y over x. Negative radical 3 over negative 1 is a positive radical 3. We are thinking about when is tangent radical 3. That would be at pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Which one of those two do I want? I want 4 pi over 3. I need to be in the third quadrant because my x and y are negative. So my answer is 2, 4 pi over 3. That gets me what I want. Questions with that? To